would like to ask for your help in shifting from the resistant mode to the receptive mode. I feel my resistant mode is kind of twofold. Uh, one is that, can you hear? One is that um, I feel the abundance in my vortex, but I feel it's not for me. And I also feel... Well, those are two different feelings that contradict one another. So which is it? Can't have it both ways. It's your vortex, so it's your stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is the basis of this erroneous and incorrect conclusion? Maybe that's the other part, is that I feel like when something does come to me from my vortex, I don't want it and I don't know how to be clear for example on it. for example I guess marriage was one but wait a minute when something comes to you from your vortex you always want it because you put it in there it grew because of you and when it comes to you you always want it so if something comes to you and you don't want it it didn't come from your vortex it came from some other receiving mode what society says what my mother says what my girlfriends say it came from my habit of thought because I get what I think about whether I want it or not and you're always in the receiving mode one day we were talking to a woman and our intention was to get her to talk about some things that she wanted and she couldn't think of anything so we started naming things that most people want and she said no I don't want that I've got that no I don't want that I've got that no I don't want that I've got that and then we explain that what she was demonstrating is that most people think that desire is about the things I don't have they're used to a feeling of yearning they think that's what desire is and so they get all off track because yearning feels like desire and satisfaction feels like telling the universe never mind I don't want it so most people are kind of upside down on how to even figure out what you want but consider this Oh, we really want you to hear this <laughs> your vortex knows what you want your vortex has deciphered it from everything that you've been living you have put it there and put it there and put it there what you want is not unknown by source energy or your inner being and when you chill when you're nice to yourself when you soothe yourself when you meditate every day for a little bit of time when you find reasons to feel satisfaction when your desire to create an atmosphere of satisfaction becomes more prevalent in your experience you'll find out what you want because it'll keep showing up and you'll say yay yay again yay again didn't know I wanted you but now you're here <laughs> come on in yeah yeah it's like I feel this sense of satisfaction about sort of fantasizing about what I want but when it comes are you judged by others I don't think so so we just have to tell you that all of this is illogical so tell us a little more like the work that I want to do in the world has been this game of just dreaming about the job and when I explore options of what that actually is in manifestation I would go do something and then I don't want it that's because you're not in the receiving mode you're not following the path of least resistance to what you really want you're jumping the gun and trying to turn some thoughts into some things and when you get there they're not satisfying because they weren't rooted in your vortex they were rooted somewhere else mm. so how do I manifest from the vortex by stop trying to make it happen and deciding that you're going to let it happen so we have some questions for you and as you answer them no right and wrong answer oh wait that's not right there are absolutely right and wrong answers but don't worry about which one you give us Got it. so does the vortex feel like a real thing to you yes so you believe that there's a vibrational version of you that is beyond where you now are yes more clarity more prosperity more satisfaction more meaning more deliciousness more awareness more satisfaction more awareness 
more clarity, more me, more realness, more evolution, more satisfaction, more delicious. So that feels like a logical thing to you in realizing that you have vibrationally accomplished more that is in the process of becoming. Does the idea of that fill you with anticipation? It fills me with fear. The reason for that is because old thoughts, those old beliefs that are in the way are so active within you that you're not letting yourself really believe in this. You're afraid that it won't be true or that you won't be able to do it. So your first words to us, when you said, I feel like what's in my vortex is not mine. That's what you were talking about. What you might say in other words is, I believe it's real, but I don't know how to get it out. Or I believe in the law of attraction. I just don't know how to utilize it. Or I'm not good at this, or I might get it wrong. Or if I let myself believe I might be disappointed. I don't want to be disappointed. There are a lot of people that don't let themselves want anything. This is why we're talking to you the way we are. You couldn't help but put those things in that vortex. They were yours to sift through and they were yours to put there. And you cannot deny ownership of what's there. It's yours. It doesn't belong to anybody else. It would not even exist if it had not been for your life and you're putting it there. It does not belong to anyone else. It belongs to you. But you have to be satisfied now without it before it can come. And that's the thing that most people haven't known. Think about the way most people approach life. If I feel satisfied right now before the man I want comes, before the money I want comes, before the whatever I want comes, if I project satisfaction to the universe, then they'll say, okay, never mind. You don't need anything else. <laughs> yes. That's the way your human minds are working. But if I suffer and if I struggle and if I whine and if I beg, then the universe will take pity on me and the universe will give me what I want. We want to say to you, how's that working out? It's not. It doesn't work out at all. And yet it's a pattern. And so what we're suggesting act or be satisfied even before the goods come. And that we're explaining to you further, be satisfied with the knowledge that it exists and be satisfied with the knowledge that it is evolving and be satisfied with the knowledge that your inner being knows and be satisfied with the knowledge that your inner being is guiding you and be satisfied with the idea that comes and the impulse that comes and be satisfied with the process in the pipeline and enjoy the journey, enjoy the journey, enjoy the journey. And yes, enjoy the manifestation, but don't need the manifestation so much that you don't enjoy the journey. That's what happens to so many. And so if you approach it from a completely human must be manifested standpoint, you're like a whole lot of people. When I get what I want, I'll be happy. And until then I won't. And we say, then you can't get there from there. You've got to find that satisfaction before you can really let it rip loose. And so if you were one and there were some who thought, wait a minute, there've been things that have come to me that I felt dissatisfaction all along. It took a long time to get there and I was really glad when it got there. Well, things are always working out for you and they're coming to you through your path of least resistance, but you don't have to do it the hard way. You can do it the easy way. And the easy way is life comes right at you and you can't deny it. And you're going to have a knee jerk reaction to it. You just are. When you see someone rude, you don't like it. And when you're rude, you don't like it. And, 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 and so you're putting things in your vortex all day, every day. And oh, your inner being adores everything you contribute to it. The gestation is so wonderful. The cooperative components gathering so much is happening before you even have any conscious awareness of it. It gets ready for you before you start receiving impulses. It's like the farmer takes the kernel of seed and puts it into the ground and he doesn't go out there half an hour later and say, come on, come on, come on. He doesn't get so frustrated that he just digs that up and eats it. <laughs> he knows that there is a process and he knows he owns the corn and he knows that if he tends it, which is what satisfaction is, that it will become, it will become all that he wants it to be. So do you accept that your vortex exists? 
Yes. And do you believe that you've put things in it? Yes. And do you believe that you're still putting things in? And do you believe that things that you didn't specifically put in have been attracted in from your inner being who's focused there? Ah, I haven't heard that before, have you? <laughs> so your inner being who is you, who received from you clarity about what you prefer is now freelancing on your behalf. <laughs> Focusing on who you are and what you like and so the cooperative components are gathering and that's why it feels like it's not yours because it's bigger than you know it's bigger than you knew it's bigger than the individual pieces that you put in and because you're not in the vortex all the time or sometimes not very much you don't recognize it as belonging to you there's another piece that goes like this those beliefs that you've picked up along your physical trail that aren't serving you go something like this you can't just unconsciously put things in your vortex and they'll just come out and bless you you got to struggle and serve and if you're not struggling and serving this is the belief that humans who want to evoke action from you teach you you have to suffer you have to deserve and deserving means suffering and if you haven't suffered then no deserving and so that's what's hanging you up here there's no suffering in this process your inner being is not asking for suffering your inner being is asking you for satisfaction your inner being is asking you to soothe yourself and give yourself a break and meditate and be nice to yourself you have to kind of practice around those other thoughts helpful very something clear. more I was just gonna say the suffering piece I feel like is everyone in my family around me is just suffering and I feel like if I don't suffer with them they're going you know I can't relate to them I can't you won't be able to relate to them but we want you to get over that over relating to the suffering these are strong words we're going to offer you here but you are a teacher to the very core of your being and you are born as an uplifter and like we said to our friend words don't teach it's only life experience that teaches and so you can't get sick enough to help a sick person become well and you can't be poor enough to help a poor person become prosperous you can only uplift anyone through the upliftment of yourself that you've already accomplished and so if you're suffering then you're not in the receptive mode and if you're not in the receptive mode you don't have anything to give the receptive mode by the way is also the replenishing mode and if you are serving others and we know you want to you all do and by that we mean soothing others if you're soothing others and their influence of their suffering becomes stronger than your inner beings influence of the well-being that's coming then you might very well be under that influence and you might start suffering with them oh then you'll relate and they'll thank you for being there for them <laughs> but you can't help them you got nothing for them and you can't let their misunderstanding get in the way of you being first of all who you need to be in order to feel good and who you need to be in order to be of any value to them so we know it's hard it's hard to thrive when others aren't thriving and oh then try and explain that to anybody <laughs> they can't hear you but when you know it you see the only thing that will ever mess up your experience with anyone or anything it's not what they think about you it's what you think about what they think about you because what they think about you cannot mess up your energy but what you think they think about you fractures your own energy and weakens you and takes you away from the receptive mode and then you don't even believe that the vortex is yours nailed it <laughs>